Hello dear viewers, welcome back to Let's Play Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. Granite Grant here, the monk of Chabritos. He's a good old gargoyle. I'm a fan of alliteration, if you haven't, haven't noticed before. Alliteration and assonance. If you're dealing with consonants or vowels. B. Oh, what are we working with here? Got some good stuff, looks like. Um, hmm. Hmm, hum, 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 hum. I guess we have one more level of the depths, sure. I don't know why it says we haven't found the crypts. I guess we haven't entered the crypts yet. We know where the entrance is. And we have entrances to the Abyss, Hell, Pandemonium, good little Ziggurat. Love me a Ziggurat. We'll be attempting that eventually. But not right now. I think, um, I think the depths is in our future here. Yeah. Trying to get to sleep here. Uh, get a little sleepier. Come here, Gecko. And you know what that means. That means crawl. I don't know why I find this game so relaxing. I mean, some, sometimes it's a little stressful. I, if I recall, our uh, trip to Vaults 5 got a little precarious. Vaults 4, cleared that out. There's our ziggurat entrance. It even looks cool. Purple and yellow. Like a crest of some sort. Let's go ahead and be smart and check out all the entrances. We need bread rations, we're not. Let's bash him down. Man, he picked up some good stuff. I'm fairly sure he didn't spawn with all of that equipment. Got our deflect missiles going. Hmm. Yeah, I like the other entrances better. <laughs> that That's not exactly a lethal situation for us, but no need to take chances. It could potentially become a lethal situation if more critters show up. I think I've used the word critters several times in videos. I'm not sure if that's a regional thing. Very well may be. Got some draconians. I imagine the entrance to Zod is somewhere around here. We have a different colored stone wall, and draconians are the primary denizens of Zot realms. Just blast some of these guys down here. How are we coming on our... What is it? Shatter? Yeah. Hey, level 27, the final one. Cool. Put our final point into intelligence here, see if that makes it any easier. Yeah, it does. Hmm. Cool. 19%. So, another couple of levels of earth magic, and we should be good to go. Maybe even just one level. We'll see. No, we'll need at least two from 19% down to... We're going to need Shatter to be significantly under 10%, probably around 5%, before the miscast effects are acceptable. The, the higher chance of a spell being miscast, the higher penalty there is for miscasting it. So big boom-boom spells can contaminate you quite a bit if you cast them before you are prepared to do so. And uh, when I say miscast effects, I mean contamination is a guarantee, and 
the stronger effects can also be other nasty things like damage or ability drain or I don't know stuff. If you want to experience some miscast effects, worship Sif Muna and then abandon her. <laughs> Which, you know, I don't recommend in a serious run, but if you're testing things out, it's uh, it's good to know what gods do when you forsake them. So our, uh, yeah, our iron shot is not even the max power yet. That's interesting. I wonder what it takes to get that to max power. I feel like we're pretty strong. I guess we're still seven levels away from max earth magic and nine from max conjurations. It is a two school spell after all. I wonder what power shatter is at. Also two pips from the top. Okay. I think we may just need more intelligence. Hopefully we pick it up somewhere. We're not going to get any more via levels. But I know we don't have any on our equipment, so that we can always uh, mix and match if we happen to find some. If we really need to, we can put on a ring of intelligence. I think we have a ring of intelligence plus five lying around somewhere. Uh, dragon ain't no big thing. This is kind of a cool little... Looks like a, a mausoleum or something. Not a very interesting area, though. Just some cool tile work. Water elementals are not particularly scary for gargoyles because we don't breathe. Similar for some of the undead races. Well, I suppose all of the undead races don't have to worry about them. Uh, water elementals have a, an engulf effect. Sort of like constriction, only more rapidly deadly. It deals more damage faster. But it doesn't really bother us. I'm not even sure if it deals damage at all. Oh, that's right, giants can stand in deep water. I forget that sometimes. Giants, hydras, other large creatures. We're gonna back up and kill this eyeball. You'll notice we're being a little more cavalier with our movement here. Uh, it's I really should be planning things out a little bit better, but we are kind of a juggernaut at this point. I mean, we've reached our maximum plus 20 armor class, which is further boosted by our armor skill, which is still only at level 10. So if we get uh, frightened, we can always put a few more points into that. But 50 armor classes is pretty good. We have a guaranteed armor or guaranteed damage reduction of I would say around well between 45 and 50 percent would be my guess. Because uh, as a gargoyle, our um, our GDR is treated as though our armor had five armor class or five base armor rating higher than it does. So basically, it's like we're wearing, well, better than plate armor, as far as that's concerned. Yeah, so uh, basically, I mean, if we assume for a thought experiment that we have 50% GDR, it means we're reducing at least 25 points of damage. We're reducing melee physical attacks by at least 25 points. Which is a lot. Not many things hit harder than that. There are definitely things that do. And we should be very scared of them. <laughs> or at least cautious. We don't have to be scared necessarily. Ah, jeez. See, this is why item destruction is frustrating. Because we have maximal fire resistance. We cannot be any more resistant to fire. But the fact that we don't have an entirely separate stat of preservation... Oh, it's just so frustrating. I'm sorry, I keep complaining about that. I know it'll go away eventually, but... And by eventually, I mean when 
0.15 becomes stable. It's going to be a glorious day. Oh, we've probably... Probably overextended a little bit here. Let's slow down what we're doing. Okay. Vampire Knight. Not so scary. Bone Dragons are tough. They are tough enemies. Hmm. I don't like this. We have plenty of scrolls of teleportation. Let's just get out of here. I know we can probably deal with this situation, but okay. That'll do. Quite a short teleport, but... I mean, it, it seemed like a reasonable use of a resource there to back off and... return. I just didn't want... I mean, we probably could have killed all of the enemies there just fine. But there was some chance that there were more enemies around and they could have walked up and given us a hard time. I mean, we I feel like we would have had to have used a consumable resource in that instance regardless. And we have um, yeah, eight more of those. So and uh, we have yet to find a wand of teleportation, but that's another option eventually. Wands, while still a consumable resource, get one to five charges per scroll of recharging. So since we have seven or eight or nine scrolls of recharging, we have effectively, oh, let's say, 25 charges of whatever. You know, I kind of forget sometimes that we have other spells. Let's get some friends. <laughs> Our summons are summoning. Recursive summoning, eh? I, I often discount summons because individually they're not that strong. I mean, this Yaktar captain, this Spreean guy, this elephant, individually, they're not going to do a ton of damage, although they will do some. But the big the big thing is just, they're a distraction. They're, they're preventing all of these monsters, not only from hitting us, but from being able to as effectively dodge our attacks. Storm Dragon and the Elephant trampling each other. Yar. Hmm. I don't really want to take a step forward. Let's see what happens if we wait another turn. He's breathing cold at us. We don't have any potions that we're particularly fond of. I don't know. They're all sort of minor utility things. Using period to make sure we didn't hit our own guy. Um... These things, not scary. Emperor Scorpions were scary once upon a time. I think maybe it was this character. We had a room full of Emperor Scorpions at the bottom of the layer. One of our characters did. Just kind of hang around here. Seems to be kind of a hotbed of activity. Uh, I, you know, I remember kind of what these guys do, but I want to double check. Paralyzed, disintegrate, slow, confuse, teleport other. So, a bunch of hexes. We're surprisingly not all that magic resistant. Oh, okay, we finally, I guess our innate magic resistance finally reached the point where it's two pips by itself. But we do have a source of it. Uh, yeah, there it is on our cloak. Which is nice. I do have a cloak of preservation somewhere that I could put on. Which might not be a terrible idea. It, we will definitely use it if we go to the slime pits. Let's see. I 
You just have one scroll of enchant armor. That's kind of a shame. I was hoping there were some in some... I, I knew we only had one in our stash, but I was hoping that there were some in the... There, yeah, there's the entrance. The Realm of Sot. I was hoping that there were some in a shop somewhere, but... Alas, alack. No such luck. Oh, huh. No sooner said... It's relatively unlikely that we'll use these for much else. Maybe for a shield of reflection, should we find one. I don't really care about enchanting our shield of uh, protection here. It's, it's nice, but we don't need to be wasting scrolls. Um, if you add bonuses to shields, it does not increase your armor class. It increases your shield rating. How are we at 50 armor class now? What happened? I just feel like our stats are changing it in odd ways. I also keep forgetting that we can spit poison, <laughs> which is kind of cool. I could have sworn we had 51 armor class just a minute ago, and we haven't modified our equipment at all. Oh, our cloak was corroded? Well, in spite of the fact that we have resist corrosion on our amulet, that's just great. That's another feature that I'm glad they're getting rid of. Corrosion becomes temporary in 0.15. Very, very pleasing to me. Sorry if I seem a little subdued. I've had a uh, a long and and arduous day. Not not a bad day by any means, but a lot of uh, a lot of brain power used. Ooh, we got a frost giant on our side. That's kind of cool. And there's Boris. We killed him once. We'll kill him again. Haha. <laughs> Got him. Oh no, not quite. There we go. This isn't over yet. Yeah, well, it's over this time, buddy. Where'd that Hell Knight go? There he is. Just waiting uh, for us to... Let's pick up this ruined demon whip. I don't imagine that it will be any better than... Uh... Oh, that's right. They're immune to fire, aren't they? Yeah. Well, they're not immune to being hit by a giant bolt of iron, so... Ha. You know, I bet we could actually cast the Hudib's Crystal Spear at this point. If we had memorized that instead of Shatter, we would have it at our disposal. But uh, Iron Shot is doing fine for now. I'm sure that while LCS would be a damage upgrade, it wouldn't... I don't know, the two extra mana points seems a little unnecessary. It would have a huge hunger cost. We just don't need it yet. Though it will certainly be nice to have for... Uh, Pandemonium Lords. Ooh, and Orbs of Fire. It's going to be really good against Orbs of Fire. Which are otherwise quite resistant to... Hmm, miscast. Good old 1% chance miscasts. I get the sneaking suspicion that the, the miscast chances are... A more complicated formula than just that one, you know, the percentage that it shows you there. Because it seems to me that it happens more often. I mean, we have not... It's... Probability is weird. It's a very odd branch of mathematics that I don't entirely understand. 
I say that like I understand a significant portion of it, which I, I don't even understand that much. But, um, you know, it's not that one out of a hundred times we will have a miscast. But, I don't know. I feel like a 90% a chance to succeed with a spell is not nearly good enough in this game. You need a 95% a plus chance to reliably cast things. And buzz off. Tired of all you enemies. You are blocking my path to the treasures at the end of a ziggurat. You are merely fodder for my skills, which are improving nicely. Shatter down to 12%. We could actually cast it if we chugged a Potion of Brilliance, so that's a nice sort of last-ditch effort or emergency situation thing. It is a plus that while we as a gargoyle are vulnerable to earth magic, we uh, we are not affected by our own shatter spell. Let's check out what this whip does. A demon whip of slashing. Intriguing. I never knew that whips were a slashing weapon. Hmm. Interesting. It's not something that we're going to use, but I would assume that even though it's a slashing weapon, it does not uh, does not chop off Hydra heads. That would be my guess. Oh, do we want to do Zot? I think we can do some Zot. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. At some point, we'll want to uh, venture into the abyss for its rune, but... Yeah, there we go. Our three runes allow us entry. In here, we can expect draconians, dragons... Liches of various sorts. Uh, probably not orbs of fire on the first couple of levels, though I certainly have seen them before in the first couple of levels, and it's always a sad day when that happens. Though we are reasonably well equipped to deal with them. We don't have a source of mutation resistance. But we have a handful of cure mutation potions back at home, and neither of our mutations are vital to our build. The wild magic one is a little bit cool. I kind of like it, but at the same time, it's going to be more useful to us once we are much, much stronger. Right now, it's more of a hindrance than a help. It keeps us from casting shatter quite as well. We found a gold dragon hide there from our gold dragon, but um, we're not going to wear gold dragon armor. It is incredibly heavy armor, second in encumbrance only to uh, crystal plate armor, which, as you might guess, is uh, pretty heavy stuff. It's kind of a cool flavor image, I mean, the idea of just a whole suit of plate mail made out of this indestructible crystal. Let's, uh, let's abjure some critters here. I love this aura of abjuration. I had not used it prior to this run, and I think it's very, very good. Just a very efficient means of dealing with otherwise tricky summoners. And it's, what, level... It is level 6, so it's hard to cast, but it's only a single spell school. So unlike Deflect Missiles, which we have struggled to power up because it works off of charms and air magic, and it takes us 30 years per rank of air magic um, with the cross-training penalty, or anti-training, whatever. 
though that is being changed in 0.15. Uh, they're removing the anti-training penalties from earth and air magic and fire and ice magic, which is cool in and of itself. And also they're, uh, I would say, buffing cross-training. They're improving it. Uh, you automatically get skill ranks in a cross-trained skill instead of just increasing the rate at which those skills train. Oh, a whole bunch of guys around us all of a sudden. How did that happen? Oh, they just all blinked to us, huh? I was, it's, it's not unreasonable to try out Shatter, but part of the reason why I would want to wait anyway, you know, not just chug a potion of brilliance and use it, is because maxing out Earth Magic uh, also increases the radius of its effectiveness. I'm not too concerned here. We have a number of tools at our disposal to deal with these guys, although we should refresh our deflect missiles. That's just good sense. Poisoning these guys and then hitting the next one uh, because they're not really doing damage to us. Though they are... Um, let's read this scroll of enchant armor before it burns. And I get frustrated with life. Again, because they're not really doing any damage to us. Let's also do that with the scroll of recharging and our wand of healing. Okay, so it's maxed out. There's a small probability that that recharge was a five recharge scroll or whatever, and we wasted one use of it, but that is somewhat unlikely and not the hugest loss if it is the case anyway. It's, it, it, when you're managing resources in Crawl, you uh, you do have to kind of gauge the value of, of various consumables based on the run. This run, we've had a ton of scrolls of recharging, and not many scrolls of, say, remove curse, comparatively. We have had to use quite a number of remove curse scrolls. Assist me, Death Cob. Oh, we lost our scroll of teleportation. Well, that's awesome. Why did I cast that spell? What is Shadow Creatures D? Okay. Another Death Cob. All right. Ooh. Moth of Wrath. How's our line of sight? Uh, right through our death cop. Great. Hmm. He berserked that draconian and the one behind it. There we go. Yeah, Moths of Wrath are basically harmless by themselves, but they berserk enemies around them, or, you know, their allies, your enemies. Sometimes you too, I think. I think they just berserk stuff willy-nilly. So one thing you may have noticed as time has gone by is that our uh, our movement penalty from Chabriados appears to be less of a burden to us. There's kind of a... Around this point in the game, the difficulty curve kind of plateaus for a little bit. And... Uh, so, you know, Zot, Slime Pits, The Abyss, 
These are all things that we have a relatively easy time dealing with. The, the monsters, we're, we're, we're defensively capable of withstanding attacks from most things, although if we allow ourselves to be surrounded and mobbed without recourse, uh, we can be in trouble, even from otherwise um, easily uh, handleable foes. We got another skill point there. Oh no, we just got our breath back. Yeah, let's um, let's move this ability to F. I think I had it on F with my last Naga character, which is um, last chance that I would have had to spit poison. I think, though, it's not an uncommon mutation to receive from a potion of beneficial mutation. There are a limited number anyway, and that's one of the more common ones, I feel. I don't know if there are different... I don't know if there are beneficial mutations that are more common than others, or if it's a fixed percentage for each one, but... That and horns, I seem to get those two a lot. Hmm, a new book. It's intriguing. Totally sneaked up on that dragon. That was fun. I like the fact that we have... Yeah, 15 points into stealth without any effort. Because, well, I mean, we did we did have to put some experience into it, but that we that manual of stealth that we found just uh, was was really beneficial for us, I think. And that's that may not be too terribly obvious now when we seem to be stronger than most of the enemies we face, but when we get to pandemonium, that would be particularly useful. Pandemonium and Hells, and Ziggurats, you need every advantage you can get on your side. Though I am optimistic about our chances. Uh, assuming that we don't hit some kind of hard check to our abilities. Uh, one, one problem you can have around this point of the game is that you, um, you run out of enemies to kill. Either... For experience reasons or equipment reasons, you you cannot really progress further than finding the orb because there is a pretty strong spike in difficulty between the realms of Zot and some levels of Pandemonium and the Hells. Well, the, the Hells definitely. The Hells are kind of a... Eh. They're very interesting. You have to sort of sprint through them. There's no treasure, really, in any of the branches of the Hells, except on the final seventh level of each one. And uh, every 20 turns or so, you are punished, which can be stat drain, damage, creatures summoned around you. So, and 20 turns is really frequently. Uh, you know, it takes you three turns to eat a meal, for example. So... Um, you have to have a lot of resources, you have to be able to get through them very rapidly. I, I, I have never actually completed a branch of the Hells. I've gotten a few levels in before I had to run away. But uh, How is Shatter coming? 11%? Getting there. Getting there. Ugh. I will maybe not clear this entire level. I kind of want to get Earth Magic up to level 22. Yeah, I see no reason to train anything other than these for right now. Um, until Shatter is castable. Then I will turn on fighting. And probably turn off Earth Magic. At, at that point, it'll be similar in function to having reached minimum delay skill with a weapon. Like, uh, a our maces and flails is at 16 and staying at 16 because that's what's required to bring our morning star to minimum delay and beyond that yes we do benefit from the additional damage and accuracy but the proportional gain is uh, much less per skill level 
the, the benefit of skills is linear, while the experience needed to gain each skill level is geometric, maybe? Not quite exponential. Well, I mean, I think they're kind of the same thing if you boil it down, but it ramps up pretty hard, basically. So it, it takes more and more effort to get the same benefit from each, uh, each individual skill. Uh, do da, 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 bashing moths. Lots of moths are wrath on this level. Not that they're necessarily rare. Ooh, cursed toes. Symbol of torment and summon mushrooms. Well, the nice thing is this cursed toe will be easier for us to deal with than some of my previous characters. Uh, let's turn on our aura of, oop, those are abilities, not spells. Turn on our aura of abjuration here, yeah. Easy money. Deflect missiles needs to go back up. Yeah, torment is a rough effect. Cut your hit points in half if you have no resistance to it. Which, fortunately, we do as a gargoyle. We are resistant to torment. Uh, I forget exactly what the reduction is. I know the number 25% is involved, but I can't recall if it's a 25% reduction in the damage or if it is a reduction to 25% of your hit points in damage which is a pretty significant difference. Regardless, it's nice. How's our bolt of fire doing power-wise? Still two from the top? It's fine. We're down to no hunger cost on all of our spells except for Shatter, which obviously will have quite a high hunger cost for quite some time. Level 9 spells are not easy to use. But they're worth it. I mean, Shatter may very well kill every enemy in sight when we cast it. Depending on, you know, the strength of the enemy and whether or not we have maxed spell power, but... Regardless, it's nice to have cleared off the hunger cost from our uh, from our iron shot and our bolt of fire, our level six spells. We may not memorize any level seven spells. There aren't a ton of them. Uh, the only two that might be well. The only one that I can think of that would be relevant, the only two that I can think of, Ball Lightning is a level 7 spell. I've never messed around with it. Uh, Delayed Fireball is a spell that may be relevant to us. It's a very interesting spell. It um, Delayed Fireball in and of itself doesn't... Hmm. You memorize Delayed Fireball and Fireball in conjunction with one another. And Delayed Fireball lets you basically put a Fireball in your pocket. And, oh, nice. Nice ally. Um, it lets you put a Fireball in your pocket, and you can use it instantly. As in, zero turns. As in, it's free. And cast it way ahead of time and just kind of have an ace in the hole. Very, very good. Uh, and, and the other bonus that it gives you is that um, you don't have to spend 
It's a level 7 spell, but you don't have to spend 12 levels of... You don't have to expend 12 spell levels memorizing both it and Firepaw. If you know one, the other is only the difference between the two. So if you already know Delayed Fireball, you can memorize Fireball for free. If you already know Fireball, Delayed Fireball only takes two spell levels to memorize. Which is, I think, very kind of the developers to do that. Where was that corpse? Here, well, here are some. We are the Maws of Wrath, so stay out of our path. I don't know if any of you ever watched Veggie Tales, but... It was one of those things that... When I was a very... Well, I don't know how young I was. Pre-10, I think. It was very entertaining. And it was before I understood what they were actually talking about, which is a bunch of uh, bunch of sort of Bible analogies of varying levels of insipidness. Some of them were fine; others were just a little obnoxious in hindsight. But there were some goofy songs. Singing vegetables are always a treat. All right, uh, we've cleared a couple of levels of Zot. I kind of wanted to cast Shatter tonight. I'm getting a little bit, a little bit sleepy, which was the purpose of this video. Uh, let's delve a little bit farther. I want to shatter some fools. I like this entrance better. Though it's rapidly uh, declining in attractiveness. Let's try this one. Boom. I really wish... Yeah. No evening stars. Wish we'd find one of those. They're cool. Some draconians, I think, are actually... Ugh, ouch. No reason to stand in a cloud of flame. It's definitely worth the two turns it takes to move out of it. Just out of curiosity, for experimental purposes, let's see how much slouch does. Not a lot of damage to these guys. Hmm. Okay. Get some friends. A couple of fire dragons, that's fine. We were thrown backward by freezing wind, it seems. Let's not stand in the fire. Let's, in fact, just retreat entirely from this situation. Losing scrolls like it's going out of style. Oh. <laughs> of course, by the time we drop them all, the fire wears off. Mm, which entrance was this? This entrance? Okay, sure. Yeah, draconians. It's kind of interesting, the distribution of the player character races throughout the varying levels of the dungeon. I mean, there's there's no reason why Draconians and Tengu should be much, much more difficult than Orcs. As player character races, they're, you know, all reasonably viable. I would say Draconians are maybe a little trickier to play than orcs or tengu. That's that's sort of a your mileage may vary situation. But in the game, or you know, in, in Monster Land, Draconians are way, way harder than I think any other player character race. 
I mean, Tengu and Draconians are comparable, certainly. Uh-huh, we're immune to poison. We're not, however, immune to hunger, so let's take care of that. Hmm. You know, let's... I know I want to cast Firestorm Sunday. Not Sunday, someday. Uh, but for now, let's just get Shatter usable. Spellcasting and Earth Magic will both aid in that endeavor. A polished whip. An artifact whip with the pain brand. Pain isn't particularly useful to us, although this brightly glowing ringmail could be. Two artifacts in as many screens. Uh, it's 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 highly highly unlikely that the whip will be better than what we're using. Its base damage is six, so uh, yeah. There's there's no way it's going to be as damaging as what we're using. Uh, and pain is not a very useful brand without any levels in necromancy. It's uh, based on your necromancy skill and maybe on your uh, young poisoner's handbook. Do we care about this? Yeah, we're not going to cast any of those spells. Spatial translocations. Oh, that's available in a shop, but we got it for free. <laughs> Teleport other actually might be worth memorizing at some point. One spell unmemorizable. Why would that be? I don't understand. Oh, it must have been in the Young Poisoner's Handbook. I don't know what's going on with that, but whatever. Maybe Olgreb's Toxic Radiance is unmemorizable since we can't be poisoned ourselves, and so it keeps us from cheaty facing it. Uh, toxic Radiance exudes a crazy aura of poison around you, but it also poisons you. <laughs> and so we, we, the developers may, in their wisdom, have prevented us from munchkinning ourselves a gargoyle that just walks around with old Reb's Radiance uh, all the time poisoning everything in his path, and suffering no ill effects. There, there used to be things, a lot of things, that you could abuse that way in this game. Uh, Haunt was one of them. There were a number of races that could just spam it. Um, because it, I don't know, it tormented you or cast pain on you or something. Something that the undead races were immune to. They changed it so that now it... Uh, 9%, okay. Now it uh, just straight up docks a portion of your health. I am curious, is it all ribs? No? Oh, ha 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 ha. We could memorize old ribs, so that is an exploit that we could use. Um, if we had found this book about 15 levels ago. Poison still affects some things now, but it's not, I don't know, it's not a robust enough effect to uh, to make us want to use spell levels on it right at this moment. Good, another scroll of enchant armor. Is uh, The question is, is our, um, is our fire dragon armor, yes, it is immune to acidic corrosion. Excellent. So all we have now that can be corroded as our cloak and our shield. Ah, I see it was in fact corroded quite a bit. I'm not sure what corroded it. I don't recall fighting acidic enemies, maybe some draconians somewhere or something, I don't know. 
But that's fine. I mean, our shield skill is still quite reasonable. Interesting little delve here. Let's uh, just pop down into Zot 5 and then pop back up. A little dangerous. I mean, more than a little dangerous, but... Not so much so that um, I was uh, able to resist my curiosity. And also, I um, electric golems, <laughs> case in point of the multi-zap that I mentioned a few videos ago. But our electricity resistance, innate electricity resistance, is keeping us safe. It's no better than any other form of electricity resistance, but we don't have to spend a slot on it. Although, <laughs> we have this ring that gives us resist lack and resist poison. I would have murdered someone for that ring on basically any other <laughs> character I've played. Any other non-gargoyle -gar character I've played. I say that because I haven't played really any of the undead races. They're very interesting. Ghouls make strong melee type critters, fighters. Uh, vampires and mummies are pretty good spellcasters if you use them correctly. Which... <laughs> is more than I know how to do. I have no clue how to manage vampire blood, whatever. I think they're making it a little less complicated than 0.15, though I couldn't tell you how. Let's come over here and bash down this Maw of Breath. Yeah, yellow draconians splash acid on things. That's that's what corroded our stuff. Bolt of fire being way better than bolt of magma. It's amazing the difference between level five spells. Well, between each of the spell levels, really, there's a pretty pretty good power increase on average. Not true with everything. There are a few hard and fast rules. And uh, why would we have four rings of wizardry turned on? We don't need to have rings of wizardry turned on. We could do nor rings of strength. I mean, we're mostly just interested in artifacts at this point. An amulet of resist mutation is the only non-artifact thing that I would be really excited to find. I would put that baby on in a heartbeat. Actually, I, I wouldn't put it on immediately. I would leave resist corrosion on until uh, until we bump into some orbs of fire, until we reach the fifth level. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and put it on. I want one more on our armor there. Because we'll probably continue to wear it. I guess we can identify this uh, ring mail. Uh, I mean, good early game armor, but not very, not very exciting now. That whip is also an early game whip, and also not very exciting now. Cast Shatter, 8%. Ugh, oh, we're so close. So very close, I can taste it. Oh. Let's, let's clear some of Zot 5. See if we can't get it online. I'm not going to go for the orb. I'm going to save the... Uh, the orb room, and Oop, let's pop back upstairs and get our mana back before we deal with his cursed toe. Yep. We 
Yeah, this is most likely the orb room right there, or the rooms leading up to the orb room. Uh, I was just kind of spamming spells there willy-nilly. Let's get to a position where uh, we have an easy retreat if we need it. Again, we are... Yeah, there's an Orb Guardian. Glad to see Orb Guardians. They are just big punching bags of experience for us. We have the, the defensive capabilities to rock them. We rock the world. Bash, bash, bash. Yeah, for... for Pure caster builds. Orb Guardians can be uh, pretty rough. If you have eschewed defensive qualities in favor of offensive might. Still 8%, huh? Getting there. Really close. Really, really close. Seven spell levels, so... Also close to being able to memorize um, the Hudib's Crystal Spear. How many... We have nine more levels of spell casting, so 18 more spell levels total. That should be fine. That should be fine. At some point we can abandon Iron Shot for the Hudib's. Why don't we shout and see what comes our way? Get some uh, get some experience going on here. I was using the the movement attack there because I have an exclusion, so it won't I won't accidentally step into it. Man, <laughs> this uh, this area of Zot 5 is a lot easier as a caster. A lot of things have been a lot easier as a caster. Oh, come on, dummy. Orb Guardians are very fast. They hit pretty hard and pretty rapidly. But for us, they're no real problem. Like I said, experience punching bags. Okay, so over here, there's going to be a... They're, they're sort of... It's... I think of a heart, a weird sort of heart. There are four chambers. Two with direct access to the orb, and then two more that precede those. Oh, man. That, uh, that was a pretty strong hit by that Orb Guardian there. There's an Orb of Fire. This is what we've been trying to avoid. Well, we don't have a source of resist mutation, but we can't exactly escape easily, so... Let's see. Uh... Still no mutations, that's good. Uh, the nice thing is we have this iron shot. Ooh, nice. Iron shot doing work there. A lot of work. Uh, the orbs of fire are just... Any, any flame from an orb of fire is mutagenic, including the flame that burns you when you hit it with melee weapons. So... You definitely, definitely need a source of resist mutation if you're hitting it in melee. Apparently, if you're blasting it down with iron shot, it's less critical. It's kind of nice. Now shatter. 6%. Cool. Wow, level 9 spells are punishing to miscast right up until the end, huh? Killer clowns. 
Killer Clowns are strong enemies with variable attacks. They, uh... They change color, and based on their color, they do different things. Huh, wow. A lot of blood from that killer clown. A little bit uh, gruesome there. This is the easiest time I think I've ever had in the, the Zot Chambers. 5%? Wow, it's still orange miscast, though. I don't like orange miscast. <laughs> it's dangerous. Let's get a friend. Not the best friend, but we won't waste another turn summoning another one. This video is running a little long, and I'm very sleepy, but we've come this far. We have, oh geez, two ancient liches at once, huh? A little bit frustrating that a draconian stepped into our line of fire there, but never said that draconians were smart, though they do make good spellcasters. It's just a little tricky because they don't, um, you won't know all of their aptitudes until they've evolved at level seven. Two moths of wrath. Using the period key here to uh, make sure we don't blast a bolt of fire into the other room where uh, where we might be noticed. Still no mutations. I don't think that ancient liches can mutate us, but might as well not take the risk. Steam, not really dangerous to us. I don't know, I'm not sure if Steam has a separate resistance category of its own. It may be lumped in with fire resistance, not entirely sure. Man, killer clowns die in, a, in quite a bloody manner. Either that or we're overkilling them with our... Ooh, hi there. Uh, deflect missiles coming in handy. <laughs> All those videos where I was talking about how good deflect missiles is. I was not disappointed. I am not disappointed. I never am. Deflect missiles is great. So is Iron Shot. Been really impressed with that as well. Though, to be fair, part of its effectiveness is because we are boosted a great deal by Chabritos. 4% Shatter, Yellow Miscast. It's usable. We're living the dream. Is that immune to fire? Is that why it says there are no... Oh, yeah. Immune to poison, fire, and negative energy. Very resistant to them. Wow. Well, we do have Iron Shot, and we do have our... Uh, I don't know why with Abjuration, or of Abjuration, I always press the wrong trigger key, but... You can summon all the mushrooms you want, Cursed Toe. I am not afraid. Yeah, this is, this is far and away the easiest time I've had with Zot 5. Whether we are lucky or super strong, I cannot say. I'm leaning towards the latter, but chickens and hatching and whatnot. 3%. It's good. <laughs> Still a yellow miscast at 3%, but we'll get it down there. I mean, we might as well max out Earth Magic here. 
And then we can go back to training fire magic and conjurations. Get our firestorm castable. Used my spells there to get the guardian's attention as much as anything. I do apologize, dear viewers, for the length of this video. I probably should have broken it up into two, but I was just kind of on a roll. Sometimes you just you just gotta you gotta go with your gut, and my gut said kill everything and then sleep. So I think I will uh, follow my gut's advice. And do just that. There it is. There's the orb. We spit the orb guardian like a pig. I don't even want to think about how that's possible with a morning star. That's, uh, that's some pretty ugly imagery right there. Can fill up the second kind of imagery. Fill up the first. One of the King Phillips. Once you reach the orb room from one side, it's actually a reasonable course of action to approach it from the other, or to approach the other room from the orb room. Uh, since the since there's that one tile choke point instead of a uh, you know what is that five tile hallway, but we already cleared out this uh, this level it seems. That's it. That was a very easy dot five. Ta da! We're not going to grab it. In fact, we're going to step off of it so I don't accidentally grab it. I don't believe you can drop it once you've picked it up. I haven't tried. And this is not the time to experiment with it, because we are going to be traipsing about other areas in a quest to, well, ideally get all 15 runes, but primarily I want to take down a ziggurat. I don't care if we take down a ziggurat and then die to an orc the second we step out. I just want to... Uh, Want to do it? Three percent. Cool. All right. Well, I well, I did not max out Earth Magic. I am very tired. This video is over an hour, and I believe this is a good stopping point. So, thank you for watching. I hope that this uh, sort of subdued uh, subdued video is is still acceptably entertainable. Entertaining? Ugh, yes, definitely time for sleep. So thank you for watching, dear viewers, and I will see you next time for more adventures with Granite Grant.